He's known as the dancing dad. Lo conoce como el padre que baila. His son was in the hospital for how many days? 149. And every day, y cada día, he would dance for his son. He, he owns a dancing company. Him and his wife, Jocelyn. Um, this young man here is an inspiration to us. Um, I need you to give him a strong applause. <laughs> What's going on, man? Uh, what's going on, man? I know it's thick in here. What's going on, man? If we feel good, say aight. Aight. Say aight. Woo. I like it. I like it. I like it. Y'all can have a seat. Y'all can have a seat. Y'all can have a seat. Um, I'm not going to be up here too long. It's thick in here, right? But before I move forward, I like to give all honor and glory to God first. <laughs> to my wife and my children. To my church family that's here as well too. And of course, give it up for Pastor Rob right here. I'm gonna I'm keep it real with you guys. I don't deserve, I don't deserve this. What is this in Zelaki? Yeah. No, 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 no. And I came here today with the thought of transformation was going to happen. My question to you is who's ready for transformation? My next question to you is. Who's ready for more empowerment? My last question to you is, who's ready for elevation? How many men were challenged today? Raise your hand. Some of y'all didn't know that y'all was gonna make it here, right? Some of y'all had an argument with someone today, right? Maybe your children. Maybe your wife. Maybe something in your community. Maybe something disrupted your spirit on Facebook or social media. But give yourself a round of applause because you're here. I need y'all to repeat after me. When we change the mind, we change the game. When we change the mind, we change the game. Oh, y'all gotta do better than that. When we change the mind, we change the game. Rebuild, rebrand, reclaim. You guys ready to reclaim your, your manhood? Y'all ready to reclaim your manhood? Here we go. Here we go. The enemy is out here to steal your vision. You know that dream that you, that God gave you himself? The enemy is out here to steal that seed from you. Why do you think he distracts you from coming here this afternoon? Pastor, because the enemy knows you're great before you know you're great. The enemy knows you're great before you even know you're great. I don't know if they got it in the back. The enemy knows you're great before you even know you're great. Show of hands. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. When you come off this mountain, who knows trouble is waiting for them? When you come off this mountain, who knows trouble is waiting for them? 
See, when, when someone does something to harm us, or we have been put in a compromised position, we, we run the risk of our vision being dispositioned. Say one more time for me. See, when someone does something harmful to us, or we have been put in a compromised position, we run the risk of our vision being dispositioned. Man of God, stop trusting your feelings and start putting your flesh under submission. A few years ago, like Pastor mentioned, my youngest son Christian was born with trisomy 21. Down syndrome. That means he has three copies of the 21st chromosome gene. He has an extra chromosome in his body. Your average person is born with 46. But God saw something special in him to give him 47. I was challenged as a father. My manhood was challenged. They wanted to take my son. They said, you should abort your son because he may have brain defects, heart defects. He may not function like a regular human being. But what the doctor didn't know, my son ain't regular. What the doctor didn't know is that he gave his, his servant a vision just like he gave you a vision. So my son had a rare blood disorder that 14 months into his life developed into cancer. And the enemy thought that I was going to be dispositioned. <laughs> the enemy thought that I was going to be shaken. But what he didn't know is that I was not forsaken. See, see you may be shaken, but you're not forsaken. Oh, y'all don't, oh, don't feel it? Oh, oh. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He knew that God didn't leave him. It was just a feeling. So man of God, put your flesh under submission. The doctor comes in and says, Kenny, your son has AMKL, leukemia. I immediately leave the room because I didn't want my emotions to play a part in my son's victory. I leave the room because I had to remove myself to improve myself. I said I had to remove myself to improve myself. 
See, sometimes you got to get out of your own way and allow God to take the way. I asked God for an answer. I asked him, God, what do you want me to do? So I go to my coach. Y'all like football, right? Y'all like football? I don't know about all that. <laughs> my man. <laughs> and I said, he said, set the atmosphere. Repeat after me. Set the atmosphere. Your manhood should be setting the atmosphere for your home, for your life, for your community, for the world that you walk in. Listen, I go in and I said a prayer around my son, around the hospital bed with my family. Before an ounce of chemo even hit his body. And we prayed around Christian. And then when the doctors came in, I say to the doctors, I don't care if you're a nurse, no si a doctor, no si a tech, no a janitor. When you enter this room, you must come in with a positive mindset. No man or woman may enter this room without a positive mindset. Because if you don't believe, then you gotta go. Just ask Jarius. They missed it. They, they missed it. Just ask Jarius, his daughter. If you don't believe, you must leave. All of this strength, where do you get it from? The strength is not given without a real test. There's a mighty man of God, and his name is Daniel. Daniel had this swagger about him. Daniel was he was a, a cold blooded dude. I mean this he was a, he was a bad boy, right? Y'all y'all know Daniel, right? He just he just had this cool swagger about him. Like he was just smooth with it, right? He was just smooth with it. You know, in the lion's den, just can you imagine him in the lion's den? Like, yo. <laughs> you know, like hold up. Don't you know I'm a man of God? <laughs> You know, I would dare say, I would dare say, Daniel was the GPS of his day. God's positioning servant. When the king needed his dream interpreted, who did he call? called Daniel. When you needed to get to the Empower Men's Conference, what did you use? The GPS. The GPS is positioned to give you the vision you need to reach your destination. Now when you get off this mountain, your vision, your culture, your leadership is going to be tested. Your servanthood, your fatherhood, your brotherhood, your manhood. 
I remember a time when the test happened when I was 21. Is Bishop Alvarez still in the building? No? Okay, okay, it's okay. He said something earlier, and I'm going to speak to it. Just hang with me, man, because this is going to bless somebody. You know when you're 21, you think you know it all, right? Imagine being 21 years old. You marry your best friend from high school. And you think you're going to live happily ever after. Yeah. Right? Like, who's been there? We've been there, right, man? We've been there, right? We've been there. And at this point in time, a baby comes into play. So now I'm a father. 21 years old. Thinking I know it all. And I go to tell my, my, my mom and my dad that they're going to be grandparents. See, what my mother was trying to show me is that my vision was blurry. My mother was acting as my Daniel. I couldn't make out what it was, but she knew what it was. And when I got married, everything started to get crazy. You think you know someone, but you really don't. How many men have been there? How many men have been there? You think you know someone and you really don't. Fight after fight, argument after argument, finances messed up, and you can't find your way. Imagine one day it gets so bad that you don't even want to be in the room anymore. It gets so bad that one day you open up your phone bill and you see that it's $700. And you start to ask questions is why is it $700 and you weren't the one that ran the bill up? God starts to open up your vision. And everything that your mother was saying before is about to come true. On your wedding day, Imagine your mother saying, you don't have to marry that girl. That baby ain't yours. Imagine getting your wife another phone and everything shifting and everything changing. All of a sudden, after she was confronted, the argument stopped, the, 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 the fighting stops, and she's a brand new person. And then one day, you open up her old phone, just because the spirit is moving in your, in your soul, and you find pictures of other men. Can I be real? Too much for church. But men, use your imagination. You guys been there. And the minute that you see these pictures, you turn and look at the little girl that you've been raising for two and a half years. And then you start to question yourself. Am I the father? Bishop Alvarez was talking about Murray. He was talking about it and I lived it. Imagine getting the test a couple weeks later. 
While you're, you're teaching dance class and your father calls you and he reads the results and then he says, you are biologically excluded of the child's Can I be real? The only way that I was able to help my son was if I was able to get complete from my past. Some of you guys have to leave something on this altar today. There's something going on in your past that you have to forget. You have to leave it alone. Because what God has for you, he can't get you to the next level unless you have a level of forgiveness from your past. I could be the man that could be in jail right now. But God saved me. Not only did he save me, but then he started restoring me. Because now I have the wife that I'm supposed to have. And not one kid, not two kids, not three kids, but four kids. Stop playing with me. You can't hold a man of God down. We can't get caught up in our feelings, men. We can't get caught up in our feelings. Because your feelings don't know your future. I said your feelings don't know your future. So here we are. Everybody say completion. Say completion. Your vision. Repeat, your vision. Your culture. Your leadership. Depends on you right now. Pastor, I, I, I know we, I know we, I know we close. I know we close. Listen, there's somebody in here right now that needs some form of completion. And I need one brave soul right now to come up here. Just one. I know it's somebody. I know one. I want to ask you one question. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is not an altar call. This is a real call. Amen. I'm going to ask y'all three questions. Amen? What do you hate? Me not being brave enough. You not being brave enough. What else do you hate? Same happened to you in the past. What else do you hate? You know, it's crazy. You're talking about paternity. I need to do that myself. Okay. What else do you hate? It's just what he says. I have a kid and I have to do that myself too. Come on, what else do you hate? I'm in a stuck position right now. Come on, what else do you hate? Come on, come on, come on. This is it, this is it, let's go. Come on. Come on. You hate being afraid. What else do you hate? A lot of my uh, choices moving forward has to deal with me doing a paternity test. You hate the choices moving forward having to do the paternity test. What else do you hate? Come on. If it's out, it's out. Let me know. You let me know. It's out? Okay, is it out? Yeah. 
What do you hate? My mother. You hate your mother. What else do you hate? My cousin. Your cousin. What else do you hate? Sometimes my own self. Sometimes your own self. What else do you hate? That I want to be better than I can't. What else do you hate? That I um, don't complete what I want to complete. That you don't want to complete what you want to complete. What else do you hate? Then I abandoned Jesus when I was young. What else do you hate? Oh my God. Jesus. Let me know if it's out. Is that how old? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, we got to get it out. The only way that we move forward is if we get it out. That toxicness has no place in a spiritual man's body. Here we go. What do you want? Clarity. Clarity. What do you want? Come on, tell me what you want. I want to be fulfilled. Come on now. The Holy Spirit. You want the Holy Spirit. What else? What do you want? What do you want? Come on. More faith. Huh? More faith. You want more faith. What do you want? Be brave more. Be brave more. What do you want? Great filter. Filter. What else do you want? Fulfill the Lord's will. Lord's will. What else do you want? My family be proud of me. Your family be proud of you. What else do you want? Mm. Mm. He got what he want. What else do you want? There you go. You know what it is. Say it. Say it. Que se cumpla el proceso. Mm. Se cumpla la palabra de Dios. That God's word be fulfilled. Amen. Here we go. Y'all ready? My God. What do you love? Te amas. My girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Come on now. What do you, what do you love? Te amas. Trying to serve the Lord. Serving the Lord. You trying to serve the Lord or are you serving the Lord? Come on. I'm trying. You trying? That's real. You love trying to do it? So let's shift from trying to doing. Amen. Come on. Hey, hey. Let's shift from trying to doing. You a man. Men, we don't try, we do. You a king. You do it. What do you love? Your family. What else you love? A son that might not be mine. You love a son that might not be yours? Well, guess what? Guess what? Let me tell you something. I got sons that's not biologically mine either. And they are mine. What do you love? God and my church. What do you love? My family. What do you love? My Lord, Jesus. Give me one word that you stand on. Una palabra. One word, not an, not an action word. What do you stand for? Loyalty. Loyalty. Y'all hear that, right, man? All your brothers behind you, they hold you accountable now. When you don't show loyalty, they check you. When you don't see loyalty, you check them. What do you stand for? Honestly, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Say the verse. For I, for I know the plans uh, that I have for you, uh, for them to prosper me. Every man in here holds you accountable to that.
And in reverse, you hold them accountable as well, too. What do you stand for? Every man here holds you accountable to that. Amen. And you hold them accountable to it as well, too. Amen. How do you feel? Great. You feel great? Yes. How do you feel? Good. Good? How do you really feel? Me doing this in public is, I think it's a step that I needed to do. That's it. How do you feel? Release and in peace now. What happens is, gentlemen, is that throughout life, because we're men, we take on so much weight and we don't know how to get it out. They'll sit there and tell us that we can't cry, like we can't be vulnerable. But what comes in the body must come out of the body. You're wondering why you can't get to the next level. You got to think of it like this. Life sometimes is like a video game. You get to the end and you know you're about to get to the next level. But for some reason, the enemy just keeps beating you and beating you and beating you. And all you got to do is shift your strategy upward and not straight ahead. Any video game you play, they tell you don't go for the body. You be like David, you aim for the head. In order for us to get to the next level, chop the head off your past and let it stay there so it never gets up. So we move forward. Repeat after me, and I'm closing. Because when we change the mind, we change the game. Let me leave y'all with this. This is from Daniel. Daniel chapter 10, verse 10. And a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you. And stand up, men, stand up. Stand up, men, stand up. For I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, Man of God, do not be afraid. Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding, to, be, to, to, and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. The vision that God has laid upon your life is about to come to pass. Danny, play something for me really quick. Man of God, this is what I want y'all to do. We getting ready for 2022. We're going to do this last exercise together and I'm closing. Because I feel the word of God, I feel, I feel that we need this right here. Because now that we've completed, we've got to see where we're going. Close your eyes. I want you to visualize 
Six months from now. Twelve months from now. What does life look like? And you have a hedge of protection around you. And the enemy is trying to attack. But he just can't break through. Imagine your family is living gloriously. And you're going around the world in your community, in your job, doing the will of God. How does it feel? What's around you? Who's in your life? Who's not in your life? What do you want more of? And what do you want less of? Imagine you have peace and you're thinking freely. Stay in that place. Six months from now, life will be changing. Your money will be flowing. And you'll be going to another level in your life. All because you changed the mind. And God changed the game. And every time you are under attack, I need you to remove yourself so that you can improve yourself. And you go to this place that you see because you got the GPS. And now you can move forward without worry, depression, anxiety, pain, because you know where you're going. Repeat after me. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow will worry about itself. And today is all we have. The beauty about today is that it will never happen again. The beauty about yesterday is that it will never happen again. So I take today and I live beyond measure. All because I changed the mind so that God can change the game. Have you been blessed? Give it up for yourself, that's my time. I don't deserve this, y'all. Um, I've made mistakes in my life, things I'm not proud of, but for some weird reason, God continues to use me, and I don't know why me, because I don't deserve this. I've lied to people. I've done horrible things to people. But I always find myself turning myself back to him. And what I leave on this altar is a past that I have now forgiven because there's no way that I can move forward without forgiving myself first. So forgive yourself, man. Forgive yourself, man. Forgive yourself, man. I hear God saying you are who I say you are. You're not what they try to claim you to be. 
You're not the labels. You are who I created you to be. And with a loud roar, he says, scream to me on three, one. 